Welcome back into the garden for a lovely sunset late spring garden tour. I want to show you what's busy growing, what's really thriving and just generally show you around season to season so that you can be inspired and see what others are busy doing in their garden. So let's go take a look and see how things are looking. So coming in nice and close here, it looks really messy, but it looks messy for a reason. These are all my coriander seeds. You can see I've let them go to seed and inside there, there's a whole bunch of ones that are actually ready to be harvested. So what I'll do, be gentle because these things seed like crazy, is I will actually chop them off and I'm going to hang them upside down so that they can ripen up and then as they ripen they can just fall off. And then what I've done is I've added a lovely little blackberry in there which is going to with time completely dominate the space and give us huge amounts of blackberries. Then we have now in full bloom a red currant. I think you saw this in the winter video. It was just a whole bunch of sticks. Now looking quite lush and a beautiful, beautiful hue of green. And next to it, some mint that died back quite a bit that is slowly coming back to life. And then I've got my, my fennel barrier, which is working really well. You'll see this is a bed of beans. It's a bed of dry beans. So I can't remember all of the names, but we've got Snow on the Mountain, Jacob's Cattle, a whole bunch of different varieties covered, surrounded by spring onion, fennel, lovely pest barrier. And then you'll see what I've done is, if I bring you in close over here, I've actually left all of these kohlrabis and you'll see they are not in good shape. But I've left them as sacrificial plants. And if I look, if you look here close to the beans, you'll see how they've just been annihilated. But right underneath that, the beans haven't been chewed. So I'm leaving these as sacrificial plants. They can get whatever worms, bugs, aphids, anything that is hungry can go to those instead of to the beans. And then in this little bed, more beans. I think these are some butter beans. They're interplanted with um, okra. And it's the first time I'm growing that, so I'm gonna be interested to see how this goes. And then our beautiful, beautiful row of oregano. This stuff is just absolutely incredible. The colors are just absolutely stunning. And you can see one of the pesky buggers that we've been dealing with at this stage. But that's going straight to the chickens. And then off to a bed that is just absolutely thriving. It's out of control. And what is so awesome about this bed, which is that it is interplanted. This angle is really amazing. It's interplanted beans. And here we have pinto beans and red kidney beans. And you can see how they are just absolutely taking over. They are so happy here. But then you look at the tomato plants and they are just on fire. I mean, there's flowers there, flowers there, flowers there, a whole batch over here. There are so many flowers and the growth is just rampant and it's interplanted with a huge amount of beans. So these two seem to really be working well together. And then inside here, you can see I have some pumpkins as well. These are gonna be grown up this trellis. You can see they're already busy sticking their fingers through them. And this trellis has Austrian kefir bone and beans. And you can see how they're already busy going all the way up. And the idea is that the beans will be going up with the pumpkins on the top. The pumpkins will slightly shade the beans and all the fruit will, will hang down and we'll just be able to pick as we go by. The same applies on the other side where you'll see we've got some more of the Austrian kefir bonins going up there. And you'll see at the base what we've done is we struggled really badly with the snout-nosed weevil. So you'll see at the base we've got diatomaceous earth at the base of every plant and that has significantly helped the damage that these weevils do to the plants. And then we've got a nice little batch of flowers here in the background with 
a whole bunch of time. This is growing out so that we can cut it, hang it upside down and harvest it for dried herbs. And we've got a whole bunch of garlic chives that I've let go to flower. These things are just beautiful. They attract so many pollinators. And you'll soon be seeing my recipe because I am going to make some garlic chive oil from, from the flowers. And then a slightly bare bed at this stage. We've got six different brinjals growing here. And then we have in here some monstrous purple carrots. Um, if you haven't seen the picture that I posted on my Facebook page, you'll see these things are absolutely massive. What will happen is brinjals get quite big and out of control. So I do foresee that pretty soon in the next summer video, these six brinjals are going to be just completely rampant. You're hardly going to see any soil. And then a slow start for these guys. This is the Australian rattlesnake bean. It's apparently a really nice bean. They've struggled on both sides of the trellis and very slow to start. But a little bit of perseverance, I'm sure we'll get there. And then as every garden needs the trusty old nasturtium, I actually found a whole bunch of caterpillars on here the other day, just munching away. You can see what, they, what they're busy doing and there's actually a little earwig on that one. This is an absolutely wonderful trap plant. It lures insects, bugs, all the things that you don't want into your garden, lures them in and they just nibble. Great sacrificial plant that every garden has to have. And then moving along, perennial basil. This stuff is just incredible for us. We've actually, for tonight, having basil pesto pasta which is based off one of the plants we cut. We got so much basil, we don't know what to do with. This thing is just keeps giving and giving and giving. And you can see because of the flowers that it has, during the day, it's just buzzing with bees. I absolutely love this plant. It's every time you walk past it, you brush up against it, you get this overwhelming whiff of basil. It's, it's truly an amazing plant to have. And then a nice messy little corner here, which is basically a, a transition patch. You can see the, the dried broad, broad beans. I'm still allowing some of them to dry up. But then what's coming up in between them are a whole bunch of Jerusalem artichokes. You can see they, they're starting to put on some nice growth and eventually they're going to be taller than what I am with beautiful little daisy-like flowers, putting out pretty decent roots that we can harvest. Then overlooking it, just a lemon tree that's still trying to get itself established. Um, this winter we'll do some, some cleaning up on this one. It took a huge pounding over winter when the gut is overflowed. Did some damage to the roots, so I'm just leaving it, not going to be doing anything to it at this stage. And then a potted horseradish. I personally don't want this stuff to take over the garden, so I'm just leaving it potted. And you can see we already got some pretty good root that's busy sticking out there. And then in this corner, we have a really nice pepino melon. This is apparently a really yummy plant. Um, the first time I'm growing it, got lots of little flowers on the go. It's also called a fruit salad plant. It grows really nice yellow fruits with purple stripes on them. And yeah, it's apparently really, really nice. I'm really looking forward to that thing putting on a, a, a few fruits to try out. And then moving over to the other side, another perennial basil. This one is taking a bit of strain. It's moved to a new area, so it's just busy getting a bit settled in, but it'll be fine. These things are drought hardy, so I have no doubt it'll bounce back pretty quickly. And then a nice rambling pumpkin on the ground. The idea here is to, we've got a big open space here, not big, small, but a nice space for, for something to grow. And I thought let's give pumpkin a go and, and see how it goes. You can see lots of flowers on the go, doing pretty well. So let's see if we can keep the pumpkin fly away this season. And then a nice fresh bed here that was planted over the weekend, basically filled with carrots, four different varieties with a nice border of marigold and sage. We use sage all the time. One of our favorite recipes is actually burnt butter sage sauce. Once again on this side, bordering out with some, some marigolds just to detract some of the pests. And what we've got growing in here, um, 
are ox heart carrots. We've got black nebula, that beautiful black one that you saw earlier. It's a really difficult name to pronounce. But I'll put it in there and you can see it for yourself. And then the trusty ideal red. In that little batch over there, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to plant in there yet. Probably a row of onions. I do plan, if you look down here, all of these are going to come out because they're pretty big fennels. I'm just leaving them for now as, um, as bee food, but they're all going to come out. And basically, this whole row is just going to be filled with onions. And then moving into the next bed here, we have a nice little batch of brinjals with clusters of beetroots. So there are three to four beetroots in a cluster over here, which is perfectly fine for them. As they grow, they'll bulge out. They won't interfere with the roots of the brinjals at all. And what will actually happen is as the brinjals grow, they'll slightly shade out the beetroots so they don't get exposed to our ridiculously hot summers and the sun that we have. And on that side, you can see the sage is just absolutely thriving, loving it. And why I love the cinder block idea is it allows you to plant things together that you normally wouldn't be able to. So for instance, you, you can't usually put sage in a vegetable garden because it gets too much water. However, here I can water this section completely independently to the sage. So that gives me a lot of freedom as to what I can plant. On this side over here, there's a lovely kale over here, which is probably going to come out as soon as the, the bugs start infesting it with the heat. But that's going to be planted with onions. Onions, once again, you don't necessarily want to be into planting with, with some of your crops but it's not going to impact and I can water that completely separately to everything else. Then moving into the next one, you'll see the pumpkin fly trap, which I'm busy testing. I, you might actually be in luck and see, yep, there we go. I'm going to try and zoom and get this. But that, my friends, is a pumpkin fly. Let me take this off and see see what I can do here to actually show you. So after a bit of zooming around, there you have a pumpkin fly. Caught, oh wow, okay. There you have a second pumpkin fly. So, <laughs> does this, oh there's actually a third one. Wow, okay, um, I checked this the other day and there were a few, but seeing three inside here now is pretty damn impressive. So this pumpkin fly works by pheromone, so it attracts the females, not the males. So I'm really, really happy to see that. It means that it's actually working and I might be able to get some kind of squash harvest this year compared to previous years that I've got absolutely nothing. So then looking into this bed, it's, it's a little bit messy because of the, the fennel which is just completely taking over. <clears throat> it's another dried bean bed. I'm trying to be as close to self-sufficient with dried beans as possible. This is red kidney bean and Jacob's cattle. So I'm trying my best and that's interplanted with two rows of celery. And then as you can see, a huge abundance of beautiful flowers, which are also attracting the bad guys. This is the Japanese beetle. They can be quite destructive but that's why you have plants here. Work with nature, don't work against it. Get plants that trap these things, catch them, feed them to the chickens. Don't just go out spraying everything and trying to kill everything in your path. Then one of our new additions, there's a slight little formation of a little guild at the bottom. This is a new apple tree, doing really well. And its friend over there is another apple tree basically got Granny Smith Golden Delicious right next to each other and hopefully they can do their thing. Moving on to what is probably my favorite bed. It is tomato and asparagus bed. You can see the asparagus is doing so well. It is the height of me and look at that little sneaky bugger up there trying to steal the sun. Another one of those Japanese beetles. So if we come in close over here 
you'll see the tomatoes are, are really starting on starting to put on some some nice girth as it goes up some nice flowers that are busy growing there and then in the inside there also some nice tomatoes so I've got a whole bunch of different varieties of tomatoes growing here I think there are eight different varieties here and then they're scattered all over the rest of the garden I think I've got 22 in total that I'm busy growing and busy trying out but as I walk around you can see it's a really really pretty bed it works really well together and then this is just some spinach which is dried out going to seed I'm letting it go to seed because this spinach was so yummy that I want to make sure that I have more for next winter another little attempted work in progress guild over here what I'm doing is this is borage as it's growing I'm just chopping it dropping it and it's just busy releasing all those nutrients back in if we look at this apple you can see we've got two little apples growing up at the top there I don't expect them to ripen because they are probably not going to get pollinated because the other tree that I just showed you didn't have flowers which means chances are there's not going to be much pollination happening and then this guy over here is the perfect saying of the trees this guy was planted this year which is year one and if you know your gardening you'd know that fruit trees year one they sleep year two they leap year three they reap so this is year one and if you look through over there that is a second year pear and you can see it is just completely shot out so we've got year one sleeping year two leaping and I've actually got an apricot at the back which is in its third year and that's fruiting for the first time and then just an experimental damn that hardy dog is noisy just a little experimental row of potatoes just to see what they what they do in the ground over here and then this is a, a slightly more shady area so you'll see this is where I have an entire border of spinach all the way around and I have fed the chickens copious amounts of greens from this from this bed that's pretty much why I had it is mainly for the chickens and it's really great because I just have an endless supply of greens for myself and for the chickens and then inside some rows of celery and then what I'm busy trying out here is the water chestnut never tried it one of the seed suppliers in South Africa got them in stock filled up a, got a bath for free at the dump filled it up with a whole bunch of stuff and some water and they're busy growing really really nicely some of the onions that I've harvested that I'm just leaving out to cure just dry out and then the red ones we'll eat pretty quickly they're not that many so we'll probably eat them pretty quickly no need to store these ones and then this is also a bed that was planted up this weekend a whole bunch of beans once again these are more of the butter beans bush variety and you can see they interplanted with basil sweet basil this time and yes we love sweet basil but for me this is mainly an interplanting for pests uh, not so much for the harvesting of the, bas the basil because we get so much from from the perennial basil as is and then just back to this first plant I forgot to mention that we do have some squash growing in between and you can see just how absolutely lush they are there's one over there there's another one over there and we've got a creeping variety at the back which is basically going to hopefully fill up this whole trellis then moving into some of the other beds another row of spinach on the border and a whole bunch of fennel up there this one is once again beans more dried beans and they interplanted with corn going with a more traditional approach this is black popcorn and um, <clears throat> my idea is to grow enough corn so that I have popcorn for the rest of the year um, that's not containing anything other than what I know is in it and then all the way along the border that is a Spanish black bean which is really nice for for Mexican Mexican dishes guava that is busy settling in uh, it's it's taken a bit of strain with the change of season but it's settling in just fine what we have here is a newly and 
existing planting of chilies, a couple of different varieties that are once again interplanted with beans. These are French beans, uh, purple beans. You can see you're already getting some really nice harvest from them. If we look all over, we've got, got some really nice beans that are busy growing. And the chilies, if I look, take it to the back here, you can see the chilies have also just started setting flowers, which means we will soon be getting some chilies. Same thing here. I had some chilies in the greenhouse, which took forever and they just aren't growing. So we got a, a couple more from the nursery just to get them growing because we can't wait any longer in the season. And they're also interplanted with some bush beans that will hopefully be germinating within the next week or two. And then just board it off with some leeks. And if we look right next to that, a pretty much out of control celery plant that has gone to flower. They do look absolutely beautiful and the bees love them. And it's working pretty well as a deterrent to the tamarillo. This tamarillo, besides some, some wind damage over here, has not been touched by any bugs. But if you look at it, it is basically completely surrounded in celery. Celery flowers give off a really strong smell. So that's without a doubt keeping the bugs pretty far away. And then I don't want to go into too much detail here because I'm going to give you a food forest tour at a later stage. But this is all really looking good. If we look on this side, things are starting to, to settle in. I've yeah, got some, some new plantings. You'll see the apricots on this tree. It's all just, yeah, starting to settle in. Pumpkins, beans, tomatoes, lemongrass. There's a whole bunch of stuff. And then moving over to the other side of the garden, we've got a, a really nice trellis that I made out of recycled bamboo that goes up. Climbing beans and pole beans, we've got those busy growing here. And then the bed is filled up with some more spinach. This one, this area is quite shaded, so it's quite nice for summer to grow the spinach, so they're not under too much strain. This is pretty much for the chickens. And if I quickly show over here, that's where the chickens are chilling. They're in bed already. It's surprisingly late. It's almost eight o'clock at the moment. And then some really tired parsley that is that has done well over the last two years, but probably just needs a bit of a break. And then another bed that I really love, this is another tomato bed. This is where some of the other varieties are. And you can see, once again, interplanted with beans. This weekend, I'm actually going to be building just a, a square scaffold over the top of this so I can tie them up. They're starting to fall over, so yeah, I don't want to get poles in that in here because I just find the bamboo sticks aren't strong enough to, to maintain them and I don't want to go and buy other things. So get a, get a structure in place, use the string and I can use it for many, many years. This is a pretty cool planting. This is, if you look down here, you'll see it's in this whole section. And this is an interplanting of potatoes and tomatoes. These two are from the same family and they are said to grow pretty well together. Got some marigolds growing in there as well. But these potatoes are just absolutely loving where they are now. Some blackberry bushes and all the way along there, my trusty old figs. That I'm sure you've heard me rant on a few times. Same here, we've got some lima beans. The idea that they're gonna fill this trellis up during summer. So the next time I do a video, hopefully, that trellis is completely filled up. And then to the next bed, which is similar to the other one, it's a bed filled with corn and beans. You'll see we've had some issues here with cutworm and you'll see at the base of most of the plants, we've got diatomaceous earth, which has completely kept the cutworm away, probably wiped out a bit of the population. So there are natural ways of, of getting things done. And here is another pumpkin fly trap. And to show you how well this is working, we've already had one of the apricots. And here's another one. Not a single sting. And right next to it, if I look here, there's another pumpkin fly. So these pumpkin flies 
These pumpkin fly traps are working like a charm. You can see that is a pumpkin fly. The lure is there and tomorrow morning this little sucker will be floating in the bottom mixture of water and dishwash liquid. So yeah, this is a, a apricot. I did a video on its curling leaves, but you can see post the in initial leaf curl, it's, it's just absolutely thriving and doing really well. And then over here, we've got a plum. This is the second year the plum has grown. Not a single fruit, but you can see, if we look here, from here all the way, this is all this year's growth. So year two, they leap and this apricot is in its third year. You can see the amount of growth this one has put on, but it's also starting to fruit. So understanding a fruit tree cycle also makes a massive difference. And then I'm running a little corner test here with some purple tomatoes. They have a fence around because my dog chases the chickens here and she does anything she can to try and get to them. And that includes running right over the potatoes. But I mean, look at that. What a beautiful, beautiful color. This is the purple potato. It's got a stunning color. I'll no doubt be doing videos on the harvesting and, and planting of these, so keep your eye up for those. So as the sun sets on another glorious Cape Town evening, I hope you enjoyed what my garden is looking like in spring. I'm expecting it to absolutely explode in summer. We've had pretty low temperatures this spring, so it really has had a slow start, but I'm, I'm pretty sure the next time you see this garden in the garden tour, it's going to be wild. I'm really looking forward to sharing it with you and to see what the garden's gonna do. If you enjoyed this video, please give it, a, give it a thumbs up. If you've got any questions about what I'm doing, what I'm growing, why I'm growing something together, drop it below and I'll get back to you. Um, I love engaging with my followers, so let me know what you think and until next time, I hope your garden thrives and just enjoy it.